Welcome to Horror Movies and Beyond. I'm your host, Ivory Tree Slittles. Follow a group of sharp-witted friends as they try to survive a night of mystery and murder in this tongue-in-cheek spoof horror comedy, Another Cabin in the Woods movie. Let's welcome the director who also produced one of the creepiest haunted house franchises, Hell House LLC, Joe Bandelli. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to talk about it. I'm excited to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Yeah, so I checked this out and, you know, the first time, because I watched it twice, and Thank the first you. time I watched <laughs> I feel like that's a what? good thing. Like, Why yeah. do people say that when I say, oh, I watched it twice? They'd be like, oh, wow, thanks. I'm like, what? No, I think I think it's the fact that you're like dedicated to your craft and doing good things. I think that's what's making people like uh, it. Okay. Also, because I want to have good notes. Like, Smart. I want to, yeah, because sometimes you'll watch one time, you know, watch something one time, and you don't remember or you don't, you miss something. And so... Oh, this this movie purposely has things in it that you have to go back and rewatch. So, <laughs> well, not just that, that you have to pay attention. You know, you, know mm-hmm. you have the movie, but then you have the background, like a voice or narration that's going on at the same time. And I, the first I thought it was just like, oh, the radio, like, you know, someone has a radio on and I didn't pay attention, but then something caught my ear. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> And then I started listening um, to what was being said, but the way you did it was that the important parts would pop in as they pause, as the main characters are pausing, or they're not talking something that serious, but then the serious of the voiceover narration comes in, but it's still very low. And it, and I mean, the volume changes. So I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, th- I mean, listen, I, I when we did this, we had a very um, specific the the social commentary of the film is never supposed to take priority to the story. So if there's story points or, or dialogue or things that are happening that are important to what is happening in the movie, you're never going to hear anything in the background that's going to take over that. But when there's not a lot of important things happening or it's a little quiet, that's when that social commentary becomes very important to the movie. See, I was right. Because <laughs> I, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I even wrote down some stuff that um, that I want to say, but some of it, I think, well, we'll get into that in a second. But okay. so you, <laughs> so obviously you directed and wrote it. And mm-hmm. I, the, the, I want to know where did this idea come from? Because it's not like a scary movie. It's not like, wow, this is crazy. It's very subtle. I feel like it's taking the very subtle things that are 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 obvious in a horror movie and then you have your your twist on them. So originally this movie was written as a horror comedy and my, my partner Matthew Wise and I wrote it. Ma- Matthew plays um, Grant in the movie, um, the, the guy who's getting married. And we we wrote this with the intention that this was supposed to be a movie that pokes fun at the cabin in the wood genre, the subgenre and within horror. And I've always been a huge fan of parody films and my favorite ones like kind of date back to like the Pink Panther series with Peter Sellers and then even extending into like Airplane with Zaz and the Naked Gun series with Leslie Nielsen. And the thing that I've always found fascinating about those types of parodies compared to the ones that have come out with like Scary Movie and Not Another Teen Movie and those kind is it's not a, the funnier parts are usually when all of the characters are playing everything serious and all the characters are playing dead serious and like that's what leslie nielsen became known for is playing everything straight and serious but it was wild and ridiculous around him so that was something that had always interested me and i think we really, really didn't figure out a lot of those components until we got into post-production on this and then it sort of so the cast knew we were making a horror comedy but i don't think they realized we were making a parody which actually played to my benefit and the story's benefit because when you get to the end of it you're basically in a place where i got to get all of the actors to perform very straight and very serious but i have like sort of this commentary on like hey like this we we've seen these types of stories before we know exactly what's going to happen 
we're the audience as well that's seen all of these things over and over again. And that's where the social commentary comes in. Hmm. So where was this shot and when? This is shot. Yeah, this was shot in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. Uh, this film had a lot of problems, not from the shooting side of it, but from like bad deals and things that I made. Um, you know, I, I know we did the panel a couple months ago talking about producing. This was one of those ones where I did not do a good job uh, with the rights and certain things. So we made this movie close to like nine years ago. Um, and it took forever to get to this point with it. And finally, I lost the rights to the movie at some at one point. Um, and then basically I was able to get the rights back and put the film out there the way it was always intended to be with what's coming out and will be out when people watch and listen to this. That is the longest I've ever heard. Like I've heard like, oh, like seven years, but they play with it. And actually, yeah, seven years. That's, that's the longest, but this is the longest nine, almost nine. Yeah. So yeah is it the actors that was also nine years or just the process of trying to put it together the process of trying to put it together the the process the post-production process was not a difficult process it was more of like the legal rights and like where the movie was going to be and me within the distribution deals that i signed like i'll be the first one to admit i signed some not so great deals that benefited me and it took some ownership away from me in terms of what i had cut final cut on and um it wasn't anything it, it was becoming something that i never wanted it to be but i i didn't done this i mean i've made so many movies since this and so for me this was always kind of one of those things that i kind of just let go and then when the rights were kind of lapsing and everything and i was like you know what i'm gonna put this out the right way like this is this movie's too funny for me to kind of just like walk away from it and be like i wanted it i, I was I was just, I always felt disappointed. Like I was never able to actually show the actors and the crew who busted their ass making this movie, what it really was intended to be. So, um, so when I got the rights back, I was like, I'm doing this, like I'm putting it out there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it what it was always intended to be. And, and, and I hope people enjoy it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you shot it nine years ago. The I did. Oh, 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 the actual shooting, like Correct. Of it, yeah, the yeah. camera. Well, yep. you didn't change. <laughs> I know. Because I'm know. looking at it and it just looks like you this just lovely, had like longer ethnic, hair. That was it. Like This lovely ethnic ambiguous face just doesn't seem to age. And I have to thank my mom for that. So, Hey, great skin. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Watching this and knowing, knowing where you are today, do you feel like there's some kind of disconnect when it comes to like no i mean yeah growth sure. as like, a person or like i feel like every filmmaker will say like when you ask what's their favorite movie what's the best movie they say the next one you know and it's like because making a feature film um making a short film is difficult making a feature film is even more difficult and usually the entire process of making a feature film usually takes anywhere from one to three years and this one obviously took longer um but the the fact that when you finish fe a feature film you always feel like you learned so much in the, those few years process that if you had to go back and redo it you would do so many things differently and fortunately enough with this um this kind of had its little place in time where and to me, I, have, I felt like, sure, I could have gone and reshot things. I could have done better with what I wanted to do for visual effects and special effects. I could have done a lot of that stuff. But the humor was like always one of the most important things of this. And the humor plays to today. And I don't think that anything, um, you know, there was a couple things when I was looking at it that like maybe like uh, like a... Um, a car sticker on a window says an older date and it's like and I just bumped bumped the camera in a little bit more to cut that out so um no I, I mean listen this this represents uh what I always wanted to do with this movie and this um you know I, I feel like when people don't make movies especially in horror horror comedies are not really something like you're a fan of horror I'm a fan of horror I love horror comedies but not many of them get made and um we talked about this on the producer panel as well at Midsummer Scream um, you get a lot of doors slammed in your face and people don't really believe in you or buy into what you're trying to sell. I'm sure at some point someone's going to ask, like, how awesome is this job? Do you guys love producing? Like, yeah, <laughs> but we get rejected a hell of a lot more than than we get yeses. And, you know, we, we have a variety of different projects between uh, the group that's up here. But I would venture to guess that we probably have all had nose or door shut in our face hundreds if not thousands of times before the products that you actually see from us up here. 
And I always felt like the humor in this movie um, with what was originally written with Matthew Wise, my partner, and then what was done with my second partner, Nick Landa, um, always felt like the humor was what drives this. And, and, you know, to your earlier question, it is an original content story. Like you're not, this isn't a stereotypical parody where you're watching us take scenes from other movies and just make them funny. Like it is a very original content story, whodunit murder mystery that takes place in the woods that we created. It's just that the characters are stereotypes and archetypes and trophy of what you've seen in all of those other Cabin in the Woods movie. And we're making fun of that. Um, I did notice that each of the characters were like that, but it wasn't to the point where it was cringy. Like no. it was very subtle. It's a very subtle horror movie, right. but it plays a big part because you're, you're like, no one really talks about that, but you're talking about it in this movie. No one really yep. says anything or notice that, but here, like the camera angles, when you're looking at her insulin or the, the, was it the ax, like how mm -hmm. it was shot. And then you have the three girls and then the ax is like in right. front of someone and watching it the second time, because I was, you know, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> so yep. I'm like, Oh, that's why it was there. Or, Oh, I yep. get it. You know? Yeah. But but yeah, so you kind of you put it in the audience face. It's like <laughs> you can't you like here we go. I mean, listen, but, when I, I not to cut you off, but when I when I made the documentary um uh, Unknown Dimension, the paranormal activity documentary, one of the things that a lot of people used to say is like I, I have I have a lot of friends and family that have never watched a lot of the movies that I've made because they're they don't like horror movies. And and so you, when I made that documentary, I remember telling people like, well, it's not really scary. Like it has elements of scary stuff in it, but we're talking, we're kind of peeling the curtain back and showing you like what was done to make it scary. And I felt like similar with this film, it was, there are scenes in this that are scary. We, we do have regular kill scenes and we do have some stuff that's a little on the gory side, but I feel like we're also showing the audience that like, we're not taking ourselves too seriously. We understand that in 2024 there has been hundreds if not thousands of movies where a bunch of people go to an isolated cabin in the woods and they all get killed like that has happened so many times and i felt like i didn't want to just do another that's how the title came about too because i felt like i just didn't want to do another generic cabin in the woods movie and that's where i was like well, that's kind of funny we should just call it another cabin in the woods movie like there were so many things in here that I was like, oh, thank goodness. It's not, it's, it's the stereotypical, but it's not cr like, right. I can't explain it. You have to see it. <laughs> yeah. And, that's a, what I'm and that's a tribute. To, that's a tribute to my cast. My cast was phenomenal. Like I had a great time working with my cast. All of them are super, super talented. And I, I'm dying to work with them all again. Um, I've worked with a few of them a couple different times and, um, I, I have a couple projects that are on, in the wings of what might happen in the next few months. And I know I'm bringing some of those people back for them. But that's also good writing. You have to get credit to, with that too. Um, Thank because you. It, it, if it wasn't written right, <laughs> it wouldn't right. convey, I don't care who's acting it. If it's not on paper, well, you, well, know, you know, well, it's like... So the interesting thing about that is, so the original script was written by Matthew Wise and me. And when we brought on Nick later on to help with things, I brought Nick on because I know Nick had similar humor and similar like jokes to me. And he kind of made a suggestion. His suggestion was the meditation sequence when we're introduced to Carter and Trisha's character in the car. And when, when, he, when he introduced that like joke, I was like, oh man, we, you just opened up a world for me. And we kind of started playing in that whole area. And I think we didn't put the social commentary in the script. So the cast never knew that stuff was going to be there. And I think if they did know that it was going to be there, it would have been a different movie. And a lot of those things that you are saying, like it might've been people playing into that stuff and it might've become cringeworthy. And, but we were very, I think we were very smart in making sure that when we made it, there's certain things that you want to keep your cast involved in as a director, but then there's also certain things that you don't. And I think we chose the right route to take by not giving too much to them so that they wouldn't change how they were going to play the scenes. Mm, okay. Deception. It, 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 <laughs> but it does play very well with that. Um, so you play <laughs> a character named a bunch of names. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know what? Is all those names that you play, uh, well, not, I'm sorry. It feels like he played a bunch of names, but his name was like four or five different names, right? It was Hector, Hector Manuel. Hector Manuel Gonzalo Domingo the Third. Okay. <laughs> um, did you make that up or those are actual people names? From no, people I actually just... made that up. Oh, I made it made up. It? So, so my cinematographer who shot this film beautifully, he goes by Carlos Garcia, but he's from Spain. So his real name is Carlos Garcia de Dios. And when we were writing this, or when I was writing this with Matt, um, I asked, Carlos was a big part of the pre-production. He was a big part of a lot of things um, that were kind of prepping before we went into production. And I remember one day finding out that his actual last name is Carlos, is Garcia de Dios. And I said to him, um, oh, I didn't realize that. And he explained to me that a lot of Spanish speaking cultures and, and Hispanic backgrounds that they take the mother's last name and the father's last name and so on and so forth. And there are people with very long names. So I like kind of as a joke, I know a lot of people that are in that world who have extremely long names, but then like their nickname is like Bobo or like something like that has nothing to do with their name. And you'd never know that that name is connected to them. So that was kind of like the joke that we wrote to kind of play with Carlos and have fun with him having a character name that really long name but then his actual name that he goes by is jay which has nothing to do with that yeah that was pretty funny he was like oh you just call me jay i was like <laughs> what <laughs> that's such an odd <laughs> um so playing a character and directing and knowing what you know now at you know during your um growth as a filmmaker how how difficult is it being a, a character and directing because i feel like if if the actor is doing something to you as you were getting seriously beat down for an example mm -hmm. like how do you know it's being done right like will you yell yeah. who yells cut and then two do you go and look at the footage and be like nah i need more hits and then go back and start all over how does that work i was always curious so yeah so being in front of camera and as well as being behind the camera is difficult i wouldn't recommend it to people I think in my journey as a filmmaker and everything that I've made, whether it was web series when I did this show called Bum Bloods back in the day, to this, to the Hell House movies, um, everything that I've done, I don't want to be in the movies. Like I love being behind the camera. I love being the director or the producer or the writer. Like that's my bread and butter. I actually fell into it because I have a sketch comedy background. I have a theater background. And so I fell into it because a lot of times when you're working with actors, you tend to like get people that really need the backstory and, they, and you got to work with them to build the performances and get to a really good place. But in comedy, a lot of times certain things are done and there is no backstory. There is no like meaning for it. It's like that character or that line is meant to be a joke. And there is no like you need to build something. It's like just deliver the line this way. And what happened was years ago when I was casting, um, like my first thing, I remember I wrote a character that was supposed to be funny in one scene with one line. And I remember I auditioned so many people for it and no one was getting it. And like, all I wanted to say was just read the line. That's all you need to do. And I'm sorry for cursing, but that's how I was like so frustrated. And, and so basically I just put myself in it and I delivered the line and it was funny. And it was, that was the whole purpose. And I think as I've gone on in my career, I've had moments comedic timing and comedic things where I'm like, I just want it to be this. And I think with the character of Jay, that character was written to be creepy. That character was written so that by the time, he, you know, spoiler alert, a lot of people in this movie die, but it was meant so that the audience is like, oh my God, if someone's going to die, that guy should be the guy to die. We want him to die. And so I knew it wasn't going to be a long, it wasn't like, you know, my character is the one that's like holding on to the end of the movie. So I knew it was going to be a short period of time. Um, and then to your, your second part of the question is, it is difficult. You have to have a good assistant director and you have to have a good uh, camera operator and cinematographer that know what you're trying to get. There are times when you're just in the scene and you trust them and they, they're yelling, that's AD will yell action and cut for you, or you'll do it on camera um, and you're trusting them to look at things. But it is a lot of, this is where it gets challenging, especially um, when you have limited time and limited budget is because you do a couple things, you try it a few different ways and then you stop and then you watch it all in playback. I would think it would be difficult, at least a little bit um, for the actors because it's like, this is my boss, right? <laughs> you know, and it's like, 
he expect me to have this performance and let's go. A am I doing it right? Is he going to say anything? Now he's going back to look and I don't know. I think it'd be. <laughs> well, here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's a fun fact about it. I, the, I scheduled my, I'm not trying to spoil it, but it, it my character dies. I'm, the, <laughs> I'm sorry. He does. <laughs> um, but I, I scheduled that character's kill scene before any of the other kill scenes because I wanted to show the actors that I, I, I had a lot of pre-production. I had a lot of prep. We went through a lot of stuff. I did a lot of rehearsals. Like I'm a big rehearsal director. So I like going through things. I like them knowing what's happening, especially if we're going to do things that are a little bit more challenging, like a kill sequence. And so I wanted them all to see, Hey, I'm never going to put you in a position where you're cold or there's a lot of stuff going on or a lot of special effects. I'm not going to put you in a position that I'm not willing to take on myself. Like I wanted you to see that I'm willing to do the same thing. Unfortunately, because <laughs> I had some scheduling issues, I scheduled it on a day that none of them else were working. So they, none of them actually got to watch me <laughs> in this sequence. So it didn't really work the way I intended it for. Another thing that was like funny because it was like random was the the wild sound effects like literally like like you hear tigers monkeys <laughs> lions i was like wait where are we is this regular woods is this the zoo the safari and it was like rah, rah. i can't I, i'm oh god <laughs> that was great that was actually really good <laughs> but it was like <laughs> And it started when you hear the car, like yep. that's like the opening, first... sh opening shot of the movie. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> Where did we that come from? When we were driving up. So the, the opening scene of the movie, when we first cut it together, there was the, the, um, not the moo sound. It was the, the, the rooster sound. So the car is driving, the score is building, and you hear the ar, 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 whatever to get that whole like build of like it's the morning, you're going somewhere, it's going to be rural. And when I was working with uh, with my partner Nick in post, who uh, who edited it and was one of the writers and producers, he put a cow mooing in there, and and so I thought it was hilarious. And so we were like, well, where can we go with this? And that evolved into let's get let's just do the rooster, the cow, and then have something ridiculous. And I think we did the tiger. So we're like, let's do that. And then it was like, let's make this a running joke in the movie. And it ends with a Tyrannosaurus Rex at the end. <laughs> so, so, but you know what's funny? Like, I, I want anyone who's listening to this to know there's a lot of silliness in this, but it is all played straight. So it's it works for the world that we're working in and i think it, it was one of those things that just kind of came and we were like this is funny this is really funny this will this will people will laugh at this yeah because i was laughing because i had i had there were times where i went back because i was like did i just hear that <laughs> wait <laughs> what hey, now you have if, you if i learned anything from the hell house franchise is we sprinkle so many breadcrumbs in the Hell House franchise of things that you might have missed and you have to go back and watch. And that was intended with this is I wanted it to be something that you're like, wait a second, and you have to go back and rewatch. Like, it's really difficult to make a movie that your people and fans will watch and be like, wait a second, I want to watch that again. Like, I want to make sure, like, now that I know what happens in the end and I know who the whodunit is and all that stuff, I want to go back and make sure I didn't miss anything. And that was what the intention was to always have those things in there. So you can kind of be like, oh, that's hilarious. I missed that. Oh, that's funny too. Oh, this was said already. Like, that that was one of the big parts for it. I mean, that that also goes with the voice of, voiceover or narration or the commentary. Because, because... <laughs> It, okay, this is my theory. It's describing what's happening, what you think may happen, or what has happened. But I feel like sometimes it's intrusive thoughts of the character as well, especially mm -hmm. like when they're conversating and, and you can hear what they may be thinking. Like right. at the time, so there's a lot going on, but the way he does it is like the sound like you will hear it, but what they're doing, I mean, it's still important, but it's kind of like their voices are lower or some kind of situation where it's not like mandatory to pay attention, but it's for you to listen. Like you right. switch back and forth, um, which isn't confusing and it doesn't um, overshadow anything. It's just, it plays along with the story. I mean, that's right. kind of what I was 
getting out of it. Yeah, and and I'd say the easiest way to do that is like um, you've seen it in movies before, where you know you're in a party scene and you hear that person off screen yell something or yell that funny comment or something that makes you giggle and makes you laugh because like it's so funny but it's off screen. There's a lot of that in this movie. There's a lot of stuff that's off screen that's like whether it's social commentary, whether it's just humor added to the movie whether it's other characters you have a lot of that stuff going on in this movie so it's definitely one of those movies that i would say turn your volume up when you're watching <laughs> yeah because it's funny like if you list like some of the stuff i don't want to like spoil it but some of the things that it was saying i was like wait what well there was one thing i think i can um say it go for where, it yeah where carter um the girl is it What's her name? I didn't even write Tr- her name. Trisha's his girlfriend. Okay, Tr- yeah. She was going to go to the bathroom, take a shower or bath or something, right? And then mm-hmm. uh, he was like looking at everybody, looking at the old guy, which <laughs> the voice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, let me go back. And then I realized it was his voice. I thought it was like the sound problem. But then anyway, and so he was like, I'm going to go watch. <laughs> it's like, and then, but- then someone's saying, well, um, Jay's character says, "Is that an open invitation? Yeah, or is that like, just for the old but guy?" It's like, yeah, it's like you hear him, someone yelling that. Hey, if it makes you laugh, it works. That's the goal. Yeah, that's what you should say. You're like, yeah, yeah, that was with my intent. <laughs> <laughs> um, the voiceover. The, okay, is Walter? I was trying to figure that out. Is that the Who's caretaker? Walter? Yeah, so that's the caretaker. So, um, okay. uh, obviously, some of that is digital. Um, that's not all his voice. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that character was written like there's the groundskeeper in every Cabin in the Woods movie. I mean, even in the movie Cabin in the Woods, there is that guy who warns them not to go to the place. And that's in every movie. And we wanted that character. We wanted that older character that is creepy that you're like, what is he doing here? Like, why is he really here? Like, there's something that he's not saying. And we wanted that red herring or potential killer to be that person. And um, and there were so many scenes that actor Ralph Cashin was so great in. And, you know, part of it was a little campy. Part of it was a little over the top. A part of it was just so worked for what we were doing. And the voice thing was just like when we hit on that we're like this is hilarious like this is so funny because the characters are reacting to those moments and they're like wait what what did this this guy just say (laughs) so So yeah the audience is reacting as well as the characters are reacting to what we would react to what is happening because it's like wait did that it's it's a very meta film it's a very meta film (laughs) yeah which i think is cool i think that's a cool way of putting that's why i was like this is different this is Thank not you. what I thought it was going to be, like a regular like a hey, spoof if, parody. It, if there is anything you can say to promote this movie, it's that. It's this is not what you think it's going to be. And I think that I think everyone should watch it because of that reason alone. It's it's not. Like I was I was, I was actually I was redoing my hair. I was like combing it out, taking out my braids or whatever, and I was watching this and and I was like, oh, <laughs> it's it's not. And it well, made me watch it again because, you know, I'm like doing things and I was like, OK, wait, that what? Like I was kind of. Yeah. And listen, I think I think this movie is going like I think horror fan like this obviously bridges a gap. It has horror fan. It's for horror fans. It's for movie fans. It's for comedy fans. The thing is, and the thing that I like the most about this and what I'm trying to accomplish with this is I really want people like it's it's the it's the type of movie we've become an audience in the last like 10 15 years that's so our attention span is off people are on their phones while they're at movie theaters like all of these things that are just so like oh my god like i don't love it like i want people to sit down put their phones away and just watch a movie and this is the type of movie that if you have to stop paying attention you're going to start missing things and then you're going to catch something and it's going to make you laugh and you're going to be like wait what did i just hear what i think i heard oh shit i gotta go back and rewatch this because i really want to pay attention to what this stuff is and 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 that's that's kind of what our goal was with this is like we want this to be a rewatchable movie but we also want it to be something that you immerse yourself in and you're with the characters and you're part of the movie as well okay each of those characters (laughs) grant was so obsessed was searching everybody in the woods. Oh, I gotta go get my friend. Oh, and he even asked Carter to go in, and Carter was like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> right? I was, 
and didn't. <laughs> and I feel like that. And I feel like that character in most of those movies would just go do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was like, "No thanks." <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Um, eventually things happen to, to these characters, but, uh, that was caught me by surprise. Sarah wants everything perfect, but then that plays out. So I'm not going to say it anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Danny, she's secretly in love with her friend, but in denial. Well, she makes Mm -hmm. everybody think she's in denial, but I knew something was up. (laughs) <laughs> a carter he has some self-esteem possessive issues like yes he was just... very much so <laughs> and is it i keep saying i want to say trish is it trish trish is the blonde trish yeah trish she was <laughs> <laughs> i can see why um <laughs> i can see why hector was looking <laughs> he was like you were what did he say i f- <laughs> or something like all damn night yeah she was i was like i mean he was kind of creepy about it but it's very creepy you were accurate about he was very creepy yeah i did not expect (laughs) his character to do that and then knowing that i know you (laughs) i was like that did that make it funnier (laughs) and like you know yeah i feel like i feel like my hopes are because obviously you know, you know me, a lot of people that made this film and whatever, they know me, but hopefully a lot of the people who are watching don't know me and know that like, hey, like I want them to be like, man, Jay's gotta go. (laughs) Jay's gotta go. He he did have to go, but it was just, I mean, this is, I don't, it was just me. It's like when I see people that I know, I mean, I've met people, but I'm, I mean, I know you a little bit more than just somebody I just met off the street or whatever. And, you know, right. so many others. So when I'm watching and you pulled up in the car, <laughs> I just started laughing and you were just smiling and just like, mm, 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 yeah. Mm. <laughs> just, but then you say you made it nine years ago. So it's like you're very young looking. I mean, you, you're still young looking now, but... <laughs> It was just the hair. <laughs> and it was just like, yeah, he has to go. And the way he was like, ah! <laughs> running up the stairs and you just lay there just getting hit. <laughs> Again, if anyone's takeaway of this is it's making our host laugh this much, I guarantee you, you'll be laughing this much too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like I said, I haven't, I'm, I, I know you have things out there, but that's the first time I ever watched you In act that way. It out, and it was funny. Like your, <laughs> like your character was. I mean, it was a serious thing going on, but you, it was just funny. And then you know, you took a pee, <laughs> and it was like, ah! I mean, you got to see it. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> so worth it. <laughs> So worth not just his character, but how every character plays out. I mean, it's a serious, you, you could feel like it's serious. It's not like a completely like, oh my God, this is going to be just hilarious. But everything was taken seriously with comedic and, you know, has some gore and, and, and things like that and horror elements. So, but it's not troll too serious like it's like ridiculous and out of control no 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 i'm serious like i have to use that as an example no no no. it's not that yeah (laughs) this is way better than that but very subtle pay attention um yeah it was just like fun make sure you pay attention to the the commentary the voiceover the little radio sound like the, the weird thing just everything matches to what is gonna turn out and especially the end like the the radio telling you what's happening and stating the obvious at the end and you're just like duh <laughs> right and and to your point like the seriousness like that fight scene's for real like that is a, that, that is an intense fight scene i was intense cuz i was sitting there like oh they really getting it's not like oh 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 it's not like fighting like this no they were getting down <laughs> yep yeah, I had a I had a fight choreographer named Kazi um, Toganes on it, and he's incredible. And he worked with my two uh, lead actresses, Clea and Nicole, and we really worked that scene, and it, it came out beautifully. And it, it, to me, that's the best thing in the movie. 
Um, but obviously that's a, that's a very different aspect of it. You know, there's horror, there's comedy. That's a hundred percent action. That is a fight scene with some brutal, brutal hits. Yeah. It definitely was. But on, I, even after all that, there's still some comedic things. Cause as he was like, Sarah, like he <laughs> was shaking her to death. I was like, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> her. <laughs> yeah. If she doesn't have a concussion by the end of this movie. <laughs> I can see why she was the way she was. Right. I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> For all them shaking she, he was doing. Watch this film. Enjoy it. Pay attention. Um, watch it a few times. Tell your friends. Because this is very different than what you think it's going to be. Um, it was very surprising. And uh, you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> So, um, is there anything you want to add that not giving away or something to pay attention, something I haven't said or just like, no, you covered a lot of it. I would say, um, you know, it's, it's an original storyline for those who like whodunits. It is a keep you guessing. You have to figure out who's doing what, um, it is a horror movie. So there are some pretty gory and, and intense kill scenes in it. Um, but it, it does have a nice layer of comedy in it to make sure that we are not taking ourselves too seriously. And I think that's the one reason that I made this movie and the reason why I might continue to make some movies within this world a little bit is, um, we take things too seriously at times. And I feel like sometimes we have to sit back and laugh at things and, you know, how many times are we going to reboot movies? How many times are we going to do sequels to movies? I mean, I'm in a franchise currently shooting a fifth in the franchise and these things obviously are fan things that fans want but i think sometimes we should take a step back and be like i need to laugh today i need something where i can poke fun at myself and that's kind of what we were doing with this movie yes and to add to what you said congrats on the the next hell house LLC. thank you lineage thank you. yes comes out <laughs> next year and i'm going to be on that one yep. <laughs> Because I, I love who, the franchise, so. For those that are watching, I am in Catherine Carmichael's bedroom right now. So we just finished week one and we are about to start week two tomorrow. So um, some crazy things are going to happen in this room. Crazier than the last one. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. I will keep an eye out on that. <laughs> I, will, I will say this. I will say this. The supernatural will be in this movie, and so will the gore. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> so, but thank you so much, Joe. This was a lot of fun. Film takes a long time, and this one took a long time for this, but he has made some great films along the way. So this just add to the addition, and I'm so glad this is able to come out because people need to see this side of horror and um you did a great job thank you so much and thank you for having me on this um i think people should see the movie and i think people should watch your podcasts all the time because you're great so thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you i rarely get people to say that which is i have like over 400 <laughs> videos on my YouTube. <laughs> so Thank you so much. Once again, thank you everybody for watching. And if you like more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment and share, share that to, to get these filmmakers out there, to get their movies out there and also get my content out there. So to have more videos like this. Once again, thank you so much, Joe, for coming on here. Thank you. <laughs>